Hi guys, this is Jim again and uh, with tips and tricks and uh, I don't know how many know but I have two 100 watt solar panels up on my roof which are permanently hooked up through their own solar regulator, they're independent to everything else. There is a backup system which is on an earlier video of how I charge it off the main engine and isolate the batteries when I'm not travelling. Now the reason I have two extra heavy duty batteries in the back is one I use to run the fridge and the other one I use for HF radio amateur radio when I'm out in the bush and uh, I thought it would be interesting if I sat down and uh, showed you a couple of little tricks that I've learnt over the years and uh, it's very interesting basically I bought this 200 watt King's solar panel solar blanket and uh, the, only, the only thing I would say as a negative towards it um, it's actually a lot heavier than what it would have been to buy a, a 150 or 200 watt solar panel these things are quite heavy, which is really surprising to me. But in saying that, what they do, they come in a way set up, which is very useful, but not for the way I use it. And uh, I'll go through the little tricks that I've done with it, and uh, I think you'll understand why I've done it this way. And uh, I just hope it helps you when you're trying to use two solar systems together, because you cannot run two solar regulators into the same battery. If you do, they'll cancel each other out and your battery won't charge. You've got to do it the way I've done it so that you hook all the panels up through the input of one regulator and uh, then you know it's charging and uh, you can see how much it's charging. But uh, I'll show you a few little toys that I've got with this and um, I'll show you the reason I've got them. Um, it's worthwhile having an amp gauge on any solar panel at any time so that you know whether or not you're getting any current into your battery or not it's really handy to know and uh, the way I've set this set up now you'll quite be amused I think it's own little regulator like a little setup and uh, you can clip it on your main battery and uh, charge your system up well what I've actually done I've got some Anderson plugs on it which weren't, weren't on it the way I've got it right and uh, with these Anderson plugs on the bottom of this regulator, on the output, which which you can turn on and off, I've got a little 12 volt light bulb to show me that I'm actually getting power into the system and it's working. Now, this setup now, the way it is now, is to charge the driver's battery, or if you had a second vehicle and you wanted to put your solar system on that just to give it a charge, um, you just take this this thing that comes with the regulator, comes with the with the panel, and you go across there and connect it up to the battery, and, and you've got a charge going. Now. Because I got the extra light in here, I know it's working. From my memory, it's that one there that turns the light off. But the system's still working, and uh, everything's very happy. Now, one of the things I did at uh, Tent World, and you can you can um, get these things everywhere. But, uh, I played around with another one I had, and um, I changed it over. One I built. This one's a commercially made one. I put Anderson plugs on both ends. It's a, basically it's a 150 amp hour uh, recording device that records the amperage and voltage and so forth going into your battery. So what I've done is I've hooked that up um, before it goes into the solar regulator. As long as I put it around the right way, we're right. Which I didn't do, of course. You remember the old rules, guys? RFM, read the flame and manual. Okay, <laughs> okay. I plug that in there into the Andersons. Now that's connected up to the solar panel. This little unit here, which you, you won't be able to see out here in this light, but I will do a close-up on it. Um, it shows you the voltage and the amperage and so forth that's going into the main battery. Now this lead here goes around to my solar panel up here and uh, that basically charges the front battery and I've got an idea whether it's working or not and whether it's charging. Now one of the tricks that I do, which is quite, quite interesting if you like to play with it, is that I have two extension leads. I bought an extension lead that came with this, plus they always had an extension lead in the bag. So I grabbed the extra extension lead with two Anderson plugs on it. And there's a reason for that is, one, I can run that longer extension lead and put the panel, you know, half a mile away sort of thing and run it, if it's a better place. Or two, is that I use one of the extension leads now to run my, ace, my amateur radio gear when I'm in camp. I just run a, I plug in the back of the car and I run it across to the wherever I set it up and uh, play radio. But the trick, the trick that I do is what I'll show you now.
device that tells me how much I'm charging from, and I think they're about 25 bucks to buy anywhere around that money. Um, I've got this system. Now, on the back of my car, I've got an Anderson plug up here. Now, this Anderson plug goes directly into my regulator, which sits there, which runs off the front solar panel, into the fridge battery, and the fridge battery is down under this side. And uh, all I have to do, if I want more power in the fridge battery, bring that back here, plug it in there. I'm not using the regulator that came with the board, I'm actually using the regulator now, it's in the car, and of course now I'm, I'm pumping power into the battery, and the, it probably won't take that much. It, uh, it's taken 0.4 of an amp while the fridge battery is fully charged anyway, so that's how I charge that battery on that side. And then what I've done is that I have a second Anderson plug over this side here, of course I've got the short leader won't reach, and that this Anderson plug here goes directly into the charging circuit on the other regulator for the radio battery. So now I've got two batteries that I can charge with 300 watts just straight out in the field. And I've actually got a double adapter hook made up where I can clip onto this and stick another solar panel on it if I need to. Um, but I don't usually have to stick that many on. Um, I have an extra one out the back here. This is a coming out one which comes out from my radio battery. And this is the one I use to run my HF radios and that when I'm out in the bush. And uh, I find that this system works fairly well. Um, there's nothing worse than trying to clip clamps on batteries and someone trips on them and knocks them off and you don't know they've been knocked off and your battery goes flat because you hadn't noticed it had been knocked off. So that's the reason why I've gone to Anderson plugs. I used to use those cigarette lighter plugs but I found them absolute rubbish in recent years and they're more grief than they're worth. So I've got rid of them all and I've changed over to Anderson. I would suggest that if you're going to go to Anderson Plugs, buy them in a bag. Um, you can buy them online in a bag, a lot cheaper than you can buy them uh, separately at J-Car or any of these auto barns or four-wheel drive shops and that they charge you a damn fortune. But don't get caught. Both these plugs here are supposed to be rated the same plug. Now, I bought this one in a pair from Altronics and they are supposed to be the same as these ones and they are not, you cannot plug these two together. So be careful when you buy them, make sure you buy the right amount that you're gonna use and make sure they fit into each other, otherwise you're wasting your money. And now I've gotta pull this one off and change the damn thing, which is rather annoying, but uh, I got caught there. So it's a good idea. Remember, you can only have one regulator on the solar panels supplying one battery. Otherwise, two regulators will cancel each other out and you'll get no charge. And uh, that's why you see a lot of people with their panels up and they can't work out why their battery's not charging and they go and buy a bigger panel. Quite often it's because they're using two regulators, one against each other, and uh, they, can't, they, they, they cut themselves right back and just don't charge because they think the battery's fully charged when it's not. So, there's a trip for you to learn. Okay, that's it from Jim. And uh, I hope you learned something from that little trick and save yourself a couple of bucks. <laughs> It, uh, I hate spending money and finding it's, uh, I have to go and spend it again. So good luck guys, have fun, and remember all else, clean up your mess before you leave. Leave your footprints, take your photos, and take your memories. Cheers guys, have a good time.